Hello students and welcome to the final video in this lesson. In this video, we're going to be looking at finding the area between two curves when the bounds might change, where the upper curve and the lower curve might change halfway through. So let's get started. You're going to need your calculator for this question, so make sure you go and grab that if you don't already have it handy. But we have two functions here. We have f of x and g of x, of course. g of x is our decaying exponential function, and that is going to be this line right here. And then f of x is going to be this sinusoid that's happening over here. So first thing we want to do is identify the points of intersection for f of x and g of x. This is a calculator question, so Put it in your calculator and find those intersection points. Alright, so after finding the intersection point, and I did have to change the window a lot in order to work with this, but I found a nice little window fit that helped me work with this graph, I got these two intersection points, which I wrote down over here on the side. So the first thing we wanna do is find the area of region R. So we have those bounds of integration. We are starting here, of course, at zero, and we're going to 0.17822. So R is going to be equal to, when we write this out, it's going to be equal to the integral from zero to 0 0.17822. We're doing the upper function minus the lower function here. So the upper function is going to be g of x in this case. I want to write out g of x minus the lower function, which is going to be f of x. So minus f of x dx. So I did cover it in a much earlier video, but I do want to show how I'm going to get these answers here without having to type in too much on the calculator. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to um, the home screen again. Um, and you can do this on a TI-84, pretty much any calculator. There might just be different methods. If you want me to make a video on that, just let me know. My class uses TI Inspires. So I'm gonna go here to a graph. Notice that I didn't delete my, my table here. So, I mean, I still have my graph here, and so I'm gonna go back to this calculator section. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna type in the integral. So the integral from uh, zero to 0 0.17822. And what I'm gonna do with this is, of course, this is gonna be dx, and g of x is, if I look here at my tab, g of x is my second function, f2. So notice the name f2. So I'm gonna write in f2 of x minus f1, because f of x is f1, so f1 of x. And let's see how we get this answer. We put in enter, and it comes out to 0 0.0647. And that is going to be our final answer. So we're gonna get 0 0.0647. Four, seven. So that right there is going to be our final answer. We found the area of region R, which is the upper function minus the lower function. So now what we want to do is find the area of region S. So we're now going from this intersection point to this last intersection point, which is uh, one, and we have a different upper and lower function. The upper function in this case is f of x, and the lower function in this case is g of x. So I'm gonna kind of basically do it the exact same way. I'm gonna write this out. So S equals the integral from a 0 0.17822, and we're going to one. And I'm writing down my upper minus lower, so F of X minus G of X dx, and this is going to be equal to, and I'm gonna do it pretty much the exact same way that I did on the calculator here. So I'm gonna go find the integral from zero point one seven eight two two, and I'm going over here to one and this time i have f1 of x minus f2 of x and this is of course going to be dx so let's put this in i get 0 0.4104 and that is going to be my final answer here 0 0.4104 and so that is going to be the area between these two curves um, here in region s so of course, what I could have done is I could have said, what is the area of region R and region S combined? Well, what I would do is I would add these two integrals here that I've just calculated. And I'll write it out like this. So I'm gonna say g of x minus f of x from zero to 0 0.17822. And then in another function, I would add it with this integral from zero 0.17822 to one of f minus g. 
But now what I want to do is find the area of the unshaded region bounded by the graphs of F, G, and X. So what are we looking at here? Well, I'm looking at this area. So all in this space that I'm shading in. What you need to know is there's a lot of intricacies here. So the first thing is I have three different regions that I'm looking at. First, I'm looking at this region where my upper function is f of x, my lower function is y equals zero, and that's gonna get me here. That's gonna get me that region in this case here, the one that I'm doing in red. And now in this region from this coordinate, this x coordinate to um, that second intersection point, I have g of x as my upper and my lower function is gonna be that x axis, so y equals zero. And then I have this little part over there um, where again, it changes back. So when I write this out, I have to have three integrals and I always need to take into account what I'm finding. Now this is nice that our lower function is y equals zero, so I don't need to necessarily write that in, but let's write out that we are finding that area of that unshaded region and we're going here from zero to that first intersection point, which is 0 0.17822. And my upper function is f of x minus zero dx. I'm not gonna write out that minus zero. Then we're gonna add it to that next one. So 0 0.17822. And we're going over to the next intersection value, which was one. And our upper function in this case was a g of x dx. And we're gonna add it to our last integral, which goes from one to, and I noticed now I'm missing something. I need to get this x coordinate right there. What is that x coordinate gonna be? Well, this is gonna be something we need on the calculator. We need that extra zero here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this over to the side and we're gonna find menu, analyze graph zero. And I'm gonna select this one. This is the one I want. And that zero comes out to be one, 0.0804, so 1.0804, so I'm going to 1.0804, and my upper function is f of x, in this case, dx. So again, this is a calculator question. You're gonna type everything here into the calculator, and remember, f of x is f1 and g of x is f2, so those, there are little notations and ways you can make this easily calculated on the calculator, so let's go ahead and do that. All right, and after typing it all into the calculator, you can see all the decimals we're getting. We're getting 0 0.4863. So let's write that out, 0 0.4863. And that right there is going to be our final answer. So notice here, as your bounds of integration change, or as your upper minus your lower function changes, what you're gonna want to do is you're gonna wanna change and you're gonna wanna write out here, okay, what is, what are those different integrals that you're gonna do? You just need to add up all these integrals. They're little tiny pieces to the puzzle. The, the formulas haven't changed. You're still using the fundamental theorem of calculus here, and now you're actually integrating the calculator a little bit more often. But the ideas haven't changed. You're still doing upper minus a lower function. You just gotta keep in mind, sometimes the upper function might change throughout the course of the problem. And the other thing that you wanna know is, as I'm writing these out on the paper, I'm not writing out f1 of x and f2 of x. Of course, yes, that is exactly what I put into the calculator because that's how the calculator recognizes it. But as I'm writing it here in the problem, I'm not, I'm doing it here with f of x and g of x. What is given to me? You have to write it out like that. No fancy calculator notation. You have to write it out using proper mathematical notation. And that is going to conclude our video, our lesson on finding the area between two curves. There's two more lessons left. This assignment actually has a homework in conjunction with the next lesson. So just, there's no homework here. You can jump right into the next lesson, which is going to utilize a lot of the concepts as you start to understand how to find uh, rotations around the x-axis and solid volumes of solids. So of course, stay tuned for that. If you do need any help in this video, reach out to me. I'm Mr. Hernandez, and this is Mr. Hernandez. Baby girl, don't need to flex, dance to the rhythm, and you do all the rest. Oh, girl, nah, nah, oh, girl, nah, nah.